Cheap Trick Surrender is a 70s song through and through. It was released in 1978, which is only four years before 1982, but let me put it this way. You'd be annoyed if a movie opening in 2002 played tub thumping. Why? Because it's from a totally different f***ing decade. Is Cooper's little sister running the most successful lemonade stand of all time? Also, it's pretty convenient that everyone paid her in exact quarters. And Cooper's little sister looks a bit too much like Sam Brenner. Cooper's mom and Sam's dad have some splaining to do. There's a pattern to how they're moving. I don't see it. You sure as hell do. This isn't the last time in this film where we'll hear about patterns, yet no one takes time to properly explain them, even when our lives depend on it. Why the hell is that in there? Looks like we have a one of these things and not like the other situation on our hands. Hey, Chewie. And he actually won it? Cooper is the real champion here. Those machines are f***ing hard, and there are no patterns. Why is he getting so much media attention and being followed by these two leather pants models? Have we forgotten this is a video game competition and not an RNC debate? If this was a fugly contest, I'd be in trouble. What is this goofy-ass accent he's using? Maybe it's a speech impediment. Are you saying all dwarves have speech impediments? That's racist. It's totally tubular. Oh, come on. Didn't Sandler exercise his 80s nostalgia demons in The Wedding Singer? Here's how the conversation went to get Dan Aykroyd in the movie. Dan. Adam, I read the script. It's awful. I won't be in the movie. Adam. Come on, I'll give you some of my money that I don't deserve. Dan. Oh, all right. But you have to use my vodka in one scene. Adam. Deal. To be included in a compilation of 1982's news events and popular culture. If all that is included, how did the aliens interpret the video game as a declaration of war? They clearly send them other stuff that should have put the video game competition into context. But then there wouldn't be a plot to this movie. That's not much of one now, you say? Well, touche. I don't have two girls that look like that standing behind me while I play video games. Was there an award ceremony where they handed out participation trophies just before this? By the looks of it, there are a lot of people with the same trophy sitting in the audience. In a video game championship, the players still have to put in quarters for some reason. The top two players in the world world right now are children roughly the same age in the same country? The original arcade game Donkey Kong famously does not have an ending and just goes to a kill screen after level 22. Unless there's a time limit we do not see, there's no reason for this game to be over at all. Congratulations. I'm coming in second! Even though there are monitors everyone can watch for each player, it feels like no one knows who won until he says this. I was actually thinking Samantha Fox. Nice, but she's no Shane Easton. There's always Madonna. Oh, come on! Didn't Sandler exercise his 80s nostalgia boner demons three minutes earlier in this movie? How about Scarlett Johansson? What are we doing right now? Is this almost self-awareness coming from Adam Sandler? And couldn't that question apply to the movie itself? This job is killing me, man. What kind of job could Kevin James have that would be killing him? UPS guy? Zookeeper? Mall cop? President? Kevin James is the president. Well, Donald Trump might be president soon, so this really doesn't seem that far-fetched at all. I got it, sweetheart, okay? There's no camera by his leg, so where are the shots of the kids coming from? I wish it worked that way in real life. Every time an elected official makes a gaffe, they quickly turn to the camera and it zooms in like they're about to say, Live from New York, it's Saturday night! Does the president just go to bars with his friends he grew up with? It would probably be a better idea for President Cooper to just invite his buddies to meet him in the privacy of the White House, where they could definitely have drinks without costing the taxpayers money. Does this bar have a valet? Where is his kiosk and umbrella? Maybe Sam just hired this guy to take his van to cover some of his appointments while he had beers with the president. You just need to channel your genius into something productive. I mean, you were incredible at video games back in the day, but... All we know about Sam is that he was good at video games. I know a lot of people who are very good at video games, modern, and more complicated video games. And I wouldn't even come close to classifying them as geniuses. Hello, I am a nerd from the Nerd Brigade. Do you have to say that every time you show up at a house? If I want to get paid, yes. No one in the history of Geek Squad and Geek Squad-like services has ever been required to say some demoralizing statement before delivering their services. My dad cheated on my mom with his 19-year-old Pilates instructor. Obnoxious TMI kid cliche is here, and this time he's ginger. No, I can hear a little more. You got any pictures? I'm kidding. I'm sorry to hear that. Adam Sandler deadpan saying something that immediately takes it back cliche. But seriously, he does this all the time. Thought of you were going to be like one of those hot when we first met in high school, but then let herself go and got... A pot belly and turkey neck with a hairy chin. More like, whoa, I should have brushed my teeth before I left the house this morning. Did you really not brush your teeth this morning? Is that really the most important thing to respond to after that speech? How about, excuse me, but I find you very inappropriate. I will be calling your supervisor. More inappropriate things that she, for no reason, finds endearing. We're under attack. What was on his computer screen? I hope it was big bold letters that read, we're under attack. What are you guys talking about? She decides to leave her kid in the room with a strange man who was just creepily checking her out, and then walks back in acting like they're being cute, talking about video games together. Not judging, but what are you doing in the closet? Is this the third or fourth inappropriate thing he said while he's there? I lost count. I'm mostly crying. A little drinky. And she answers him honestly? This guy could actually be a real creep or rapist, and you're just telling him you're vulnerable and drinking in a room with only one escape. But why in the closet? Because I don't want Maddie to see me. 
Well, she told him literally everything about his dad cheating on her. What damage do you think this could do? Drinking shortly out of a sippy cup. Couldn't she just drink it straight out of the bottle? Or was that not pathetic enough? So if an alien creature shoots an earthly object of any kind, it turns into tiny allspark cubes? Why would shooting something cause it to take on the properties of the thing that shot it? Even the fire it creates is all cuby. This is way too complicated for this film. I'm sure we will never get an answer. <laughs> it took most of his arm to get pixelated before he started screaming. It's just not where I thought I'd be at this point in my life. Spilling your guts to a middle-aged stranger in tech support is a pretty low point. But uh, does this person have no friends? Whoa! Are you trying to kiss me? Violet lets Sam get 90% of the way in for a kiss before she realizes what a bad idea this is. Let's just say I was a billionaire, and we were out on my giant yacht in the middle of the Mediterranean sipping champagne, and I went in to kiss you. Would you have kissed me back then? Why is she acting like he duped her with this question? She could just say, it's because you're kind of gross and not charming, it has nothing to do with your profession. But instead, she seems like she's kind of into this guy, which I'm not buying. I don't think Sam has ever brushed his teeth. Us normal teeth brushers know that he is missing two key ingredients, toothpaste and water. Whoa, she went from zero to psycho in 3.4 seconds. And I think she went to psycho as soon as she was remotely interested in Sam Brenner. Is she not the least bit curious as to why he's also going to the White House? I know they have AV needs there, but I feel like a high-ranking military official should assume it's not the nerd squad and subsequently question him instead of making faces. Colonel Van Patten? And she's military brass. What a serendipitous coincidence. Why are you following me? They're far enough into the West Wing at this point for her question to be long overdue. Obvious use of moonwalk stunt double. Our Air Force base in Guam was attacked. Does Brenner have a certain level of security clearance that allows him to moonwalk into the Oval Office and have the President just tell him secrets? Come here. Check this out. Me? Yes, you. Come here. Being the President, Cooper has the entire U.S. military at his disposal. And there is no one in the military or any branch of government, many of which are filled with nerdy video gamers, that could identify what video game that sound was from. Can I sit in your chair? No, you can't. But you can mess around with my laptop that probably has classified information on it, like the video you just told him to watch. And let's blow Gallagher to hell! Who's Gallagher? Can I really send a movie that is clearly very dumb for this admiral, one of the highest ranking officials in the military, who says things like this? The answer is yes. If this sign is telling the truth, Brenner should definitely not be allowed in this room. And better yet, the door should be closed and guarded by the Secret Service. MIT, yes. Mississippi Institute of Technology. If Sam Brenner is going to make up a school, he should at least make one up that sounds better, like South Harmon Institute of Technology. Mr. Brenner here was the world Galaga champion. He Apparently the arcade tournament where he became the Galaga champion was the only one that was ever held. And he, Ludlow, and the Fire Blaster set all the arcade game records that are available to set. Yeah, not this version though, uh, Blue Lagoon. Even though we're out of the 80s, we're not done with 80s references. Does she really get to talk twice? She's not even at the grown-ups table. Adam Sandler is supposed to be the love interest for her, keep in mind. So I suggest the man in the orange shorts leave the room immediately. Admiral, who was just erratically saying crazy things, is suddenly the voice of reason. Gandalf and Harry Potter in the same room, imagine that. Not only is that not even close and aggressively unfunny, how has Brenner not been forcefully ejected from the White House at this point? Brenner has a brief moment of super strength and hits Ludlow so hard he flies to the back of the van, defies the latch on the back door, and lands in the street. His name is Bow Bow. Is that a Pacific Islander name? No, I don't think so. Is it lazy racism in an Adam Sandler movie? Yes, yes it is. Something peculiar interrupted Sophia Bush's sexy shenanigans. Now, I guess I can wrap my head around no one watching One Tree Hill reruns, but no government agency was able to intercept that message that Ludlow just happened to record. This actually may seem plausible after meeting the president and his top-ranking military officials. Inhabitants of Earth. The winner takes the loser's planet. So aliens find a time capsule that's been shot into the infinity of outer space, take it seriously, and head to Earth to basically play a game. Still slightly less implausible than Sam ending up with Michelle Monaghan. Okay, I got lost about halfway through. Why does Madonna want to take over our planet? He the President of the United States got lost watching something that I, not the President, was able to comprehend, even though I was only half paying attention. This Indian kid is somehow not brown-faced Rob Schneider. Granted, we'd send that too and probably add 10 to 50 cents, but seems like Rob Schneider needs to be in this somehow, even if it's to take an Indian actor's job away. Why this kid? The last trophy was taken from the actual site that was attacked. This kid was a few miles away. They must also be upset that he wasn't played by one of Adam Sandler's friends. And then I was watching through window. Not only does Brenner get to be in areas with no security clearance, but now, so does Ludlow, and he's clearly unstable. So these creatures are made from intelligent light energy. That doesn't really check out, because light isn't traditional matter. It is photons that have properties of both waves and particles, that carry energy proportional to the radiation frequency, but has zero rest mass. Yet these things seem to be solid and have force. And that doesn't really explain why everything the light energy cubes come into contact with turn into more light cubes. What? I'm sorry. 
I'm being told to stop trying to inject photon physics into an Adam Sandler movie about arcade games where Kevin James is the president. But they calm down pretty quick when we hit them with some supercharged light particles. She said they calmed down when her magical light cannon simply destroyed it. And the uh, uh, slut-seeking missile. The premise of the film and constant 80s references seem like it's a movie for Gen Xers, but a puerile joke about sluts makes it seem like it's for 13-year-old boys. How about we meet in the middle and say it's for no one? Is that how you got into the Mississippi Institute of Technology? Violet seems like she should be an intelligent woman. Lieutenant Colonel, apparent quantum physicist, yet she keeps flirt fighting with this guy who is clearly a loser asshole. Can anyone just bring their friends or kids to top secret military labs? Maddie's old enough to be left alone in her office, but here is fine, I guess. President Cooper doesn't seem to have a moment of doubt for bringing Ludlow into the situation. Nor do any of the other military officials say this man is unstable and shouldn't be allowed in here. But suddenly, it might be coming in handy to saving our planet. They still seem to be operating under the notion that Brenner and Ludlow are the only ones that are capable of helping in this situation because they competed in, but didn't really win, an arcade gaming championship in a suburb of DC over 30 years ago. Someone should tell them that there are thousands of gamers out there who are probably more capable. During this montage, they go over things that people who have walked past an arcade would know. You don't want to get hit by a boulder in asteroids, or you can't climb the ladder with a hammer in Donkey Kong. What about those patterns? Those seem to be extremely important, yet neither Brenner nor Ludlow are taking the time to explain them. Go, 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 boo, boo, boo. Where are they go, go, going to so quickly? Are they running to the middle of the field just to stand? Try not to cause total panic. If he's interested in not causing total panic, why would they aggressively send troops into that location with no explanation? Also, Sean Bean isn't dying in this scene. I don't want to hear another word out of you. This is the first military guy to say the right thing to Ludlow. I had two days to do things never done before on this planet, sir. This lieutenant colonel, with the help of a robot with a head shaped like the alien from Alien, weaponized flashlights in two days? At this point in the movie, okay, sure. Just remember who you're talking to, Missy. Thanks to the military for stepping in to make the gamers seem positively enlightened regarding gender politics. Isn't it a coincidence that the character Sandler plays just so happen to wear the same ill-fitting schlub clothes he favors? Shoot for the hell! Okay, this has very little to do with video game knowledge. They're just shooting guns at something, which is what the military trains for normally. Not only should they be able to handle this, but they should be able to handle it better than Brenner and Ludlow. Those guns are probably heavy as sh**. Yet out of shape, Brenner just grabs it and starts accurately shooting, like this is the same as using the controls on an arcade game. We're the only ones who can do this! There are probably thousands of people that can do this, and in a normal world, some of those people would be in the military. Let the nerds take over! Fantasy wish fulfillment cliche. Brenner and Ludlow are shooting these things right above their heads, and light energy pixels are raining down on them, and they're not getting hurt. Weren't these the same objects they had in a containment chamber in the lab? I guess being an arcade game champion exempts you from looking while shooting. So are they actually collecting points here? Why are these numbers appearing? This is mostly just a just don't die situation. Very convenient that their 2D gaming skills translated so well into the third dimension. Why does this centipede decide to go rogue? That's not part of the game. Old person not noticing mayhem going on behind them because they are hard of hearing or too focused on their mundane task cliche. Also, holy sh overuse of cliche cliche. Brenner decides to rapid fire kill the centipede moments before it gets to the kid, when he clearly had the chance to do it in the old lady's apartment earlier and didn't. Also, why is this child alone on the street at night? Is he a drug dealer? Oh look, Dan Aykroyd's liquor. Looks like Adam Sandler held up his end of the deal. And then the old woman and the duck hunt dog ran away together and lived happily ever after. I say this because we never see the duck hunt dog again. Also, I thought all the aliens based their on stuff they got from 1982. How do they know about duck hunt or Madonna? In fact, there are a lot of suspiciously 1984 things coming down from the aliens in this movie. Caught hacking cell phone companies and adding one of those fees you see on your bill every month, but I have no idea what it is. What it is. Made about 50 million before he was convicted. We haven't convicted anyone working for AT&T or Verizon for doing that same thing in this universe or theirs. I hope you don't zap me with his space gun. Peter, just, Peter, no. Pick one of them, we'll set up a coffee. Serena Williams, and we are closed. It's funny, see? Because powerful, successful women are nothing more than prizes to be won. We'll say it every time it appears, the right stuff's hero walk cliche. This time with too much fog. Couldn't do a second take. Is it necessary to the alien sense of fair play that the cars be the same color as the ghosts in Pac-Man? And we're calling a mini ghost. How long have they known that this battle was going to be Pac-Man? Regardless, any amount of time seems like not enough time to develop light particle force field whatever she said cars. Why did she need to buckle him in? I know Sandler movies have insanely juvenile protagonists, but this is ridiculous. Does he need a mean mommy lady to wipe his butt, too? Ludlow's right, you do smell good. He's just as obnoxious as he's ever been, but now she's charmed by his garbage personality for no logical reason. Come on, guys. I love how they hired Jane Krakowski to not really say anything for the entire movie. The military didn't clear the area, which will make this battle more difficult. Oh, also, loss of civilian life. Pac-Man's a bad guy? Did no one proofread the script before they made this movie? They should know by now that Pac-Man is the bad guy. What did they think their ghost Mini Coopers were for? Also, Pac-Man shouldn't be the bad guy. You play the game as Pac-Man, not the ghosts. They should be in a giant Pac-Man car looking for dots and avoiding ghosts, not ghost cars looking to get Pac-Man. Pac-Man is not bad. 
I created him to bring joy to all the people of the world. I guess I should also explain that Toru Iwatani should know that that is not actually Pac-Man. It's an alien that's made to look like Pac-Man. He's my son! Toru Iwatani has clearly gone mad. He's gonna get his hand bitten off now. It was in the trailer. That was some twisted Pinocchio Geppetto stuff right there. For the amount of time it took for you to say that you'd think a laugh or two might come out of me. But damned if it didn't. Not only are these guys experts at video games and light cannon shooting, but they are also expert stunt drivers. Pac-Man's got 10 seconds where he can eat us! Did Violet design the ghost cars to be compatible with power pellets? Because that seems like something you would want to avoid. If Pac-Man is faster than the ghosts, how has Pac-Man not eaten Brenner yet? And now, with nothing but a Mini Cooper and arcade game knowledge, Brenner is going to back through a concrete wall and land on an adjacent roof without damaging his ghost car. The military has been unsuccessful of securing any area throughout this entire movie. I don't know what would be worse, them failing or them actually pulling this off. Why have they decided to develop this guy as kind of a side antagonist after we've made it two thirds of the way through the movie? Maybe they just paid Brian Cox for a certain amount of screen time and they wanted to get their money's worth. You gotta pretend you're the guy and you don't want to die. I know Brenner is going to act like this is silly, but it was basically what he was doing when he fought the centipede in the old lady's apartment and when he defeated Pac-Man. As soon as they introduced these arcade characters to the real world, they threw out all the precious patterns. Why is it that all the other arcade characters are destroyed forever when they get broken up, but Kubert gets to bust into a million pieces and just come right back together and seem happy about it? No one moves to impeach the president after these dance moves. You and Will Smith talked about this. They promised me an island if I did this. I assume she's talking about being in the movie. I don't know why, but Kubert and a tux really makes me upset. Welcome to your life. The filmmakers wanted to get their money's worth, so they made Tony Award-nominated actor Josh Gad sing in the movie. You know what? Plus 10 sins for any other extraneous 80s reference that appears, just in case I lose count. Someone with your skills, you'd be better off inventing technology rather than installing it. I must have missed Brenner's skills for inventing technology, as the guy is good at video games and went to a fictional school in Mississippi. You know, I had my shot when I was a kid in the arcades. How was that his last chance? He was 12 years old. For him, playing video games was a hobby, and he just happened to be really good at it. And why am I explaining this to a grown man who can't hear me? A cop fished the east side of the East River the night you fell in. There is no way someone could find a pair of sunglasses in the East River. There are things a lot larger than a pair of sunglasses in the East River that have yet to be recovered. The Pac-Man she code for super speed? You're a cheater. Yes, he's a cheater. But he was driving a f***ing car he had no way to input a cheat code into. Where did Violet get a jumpsuit? Did they have a lady jumpsuit just in case one showed up who could help? Or did they stay up all night making her a jumpsuit? Now they tried to take me to some underground bunker, so I went rogue. So the chubby president in a Chewbacca mask was able to escape the Secret Service and also find an arcade jumpsuit of his own along the way. Ludlow gets his wish. Lady Lisa is real. And this really works out for him because she isn't pixelated. She's Ashley Benson. Ashley Benson doesn't speak during this entire film, making her the greatest actress in the movie. This is the only video game monster that turned into a human being. Presumably so this very moment wouldn't be so disgusting, but it's still kind of disgusting. One game you suck at. Isn't he like the best in the world at everything and just the second best at Donkey Kong? Let's give him a little credit, Mr. President. Peebert. Also, thanks to the movie's pee joke, I had to write Cubert urinates in my notes, plus two sins for shaming me. Unless the aliens have lessened the gravity on this spaceship, Violet, Brenner, and Cooper have all suddenly become parkour experts. Any planets are cheater! That's why he was so good in New York! good of Donkey Kong to let them have this conversation during the battle. Also, how did Eddie put cheat codes into an arcade game? And I don't remember any cheats for classic arcade Donkey Kong that would allow you to get a super high score. By the way, on Earth, three people are taking on an entire swarm of video game bad guys, and one of them used to be one of the bad guys, so you can see the bind I'm in. Reset button! Now that Brenner has had a small pep talk, he becomes amazing at the game and easily defeats it. Please! Okay, fine. Why does Cubert need help? He just popped back to life from being flattened. Oh, and we never see the aliens. I guess it would have cost too much to animate all these game characters and aliens. Lady Lisa! Lady Lisa. Yeah! No. Our weird hero gets a sex toy after all. What a great message. But no one else is weirded out by this? That was just Cubert. This movie is now officially so bad, Adam Sandler is sitting it from within. Serena Williams was pretty disgusted with Eddie at the awkward adult prom that happened earlier. Yet she's waiting in the Lincoln bedroom for a three-way with Eddie and Martha Stewart. Also, how did Martha Stewart find out about this three-way? I could have done without this. That means Cubert didn't become Lady Lisa, but was Cubert just transformed to look like Lady Lisa. Which means Ludlow f*** Cubert. Good night, everybody! What's it going to be like up there? 200 degrees in the sunlight, minus 200 in the shade. 
canyons of razor sharp rock, unpredictable gravitational conditions, unexpected eruptions, things like that. Okay, so the scariest environment imaginable. Thanks. That's all you gotta say. Scariest environment imaginable. You feel you've been rehabilitated? Oh yes, sir. Want to attach your name to a world record? When you want your name written into history, you have to pay the price. Ah, typical, Roman. Oh, I'm gonna get this money. I'm hungry. Thanks for being my friend. Thank you for being a friend. I'm gonna wreck it. I've been waiting to do this since 1982. I haven't killed anybody. Since 1984. You might not have my name. You have my blood. <laughs>